What's up, middle schoolers? Michael here. So there are a lot of things that I love about spending time with students. That's why I'm a leader here in the middle school class. That's also why I chaperone my old high school's debate team on the weekends. I love it. I love spending time with students. But in addition to all the fun things that you get to do hanging out with you guys, I'm also responsible for you when I'm the only adult that's around, and that can be a little bit stressful, especially when something goes wrong. I remember about a year ago, I was at a debate tournament with some of my high school students, and I came over to the table that they were all sitting at, and one of the students stood up, looked at me, and said, I think I broke my finger. My first thought was, how in the world could that possibly have happened to you? We're not playing sports here. You're supposed to walk into classrooms and talk at another kid for a little bit, and then we go home. How did you hurt yourself? He told me that he was trying to scare his friends, so he hid behind a door and tried to push it closed without being seen, and he got his hand caught in the door jam and he hurt his finger like really badly. He was genuinely concerned about it and he looked at me and said, what do I do? And I thought, I have no idea what you're supposed to do. I don't work in a school. I don't know all the procedures for these things. Teachers probably deal with this stuff like at least once a year, but I have never had this happen before. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. All the other adults in this building don't work at the school that I'm working with, so I had no idea who to talk to. I didn't know what needed to happen next. I thought, oh my gosh, what do I do now? And this is my responsibility, and I don't know what to do about it. I think we all feel that way sometimes. This this panicky feeling of what am I supposed to do now? There's something that needs to be fixed. There's something that needs to be helped, but I don't know how to actually do it. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about injustice, the big unjust things that happen in the lives of people all around us. And I tell you this story this morning because I think that feeling of I want things to be better, but I don't know how I can actually do anything now to make things better for for myself or for anyone else. That's such a common feeling when it comes to these big, heavy problems that we see people dealing with. We've talked about how to see where injustice happens, and we've talked about some ways that we should think and feel about it, right? We've talked about knowing that you're not alone in it when you are in an unjust situation. We've talked about knowing that God is doing something about injustice. But here's the thing. You can see and think all the right things about injustice, but still never end up actually doing anything about it. It seems sometimes like what's really needed is big action from people with big potential to make real and deep change in the lives of a lot of people all at once. And you might feel like, well, that can't possibly be me, can it? Like, I'm a middle school kid. What could I possibly do to make a real difference about these big problems of injustice. People all around me are treated unfairly every day. But what am I supposed to do about that? I can't control everyone, right? Or some people don't have things that they really need. But again, what is a kid supposed to do about that? You don't have a job. You don't make your own money. What are you supposed to do to provide for people that don't have things that they need? If we really want to be people that do something about injustice, a lot of things have to happen. A lot of things have to line up. We have to pay really good attention and and see where and how it happens. We have to keep caring about it every day. We have to always be wanting to look for it and do an additional thing about it, even when it's hard and we rather just ignore the world's problems for a day so that we can just relax for a minute. We have to figure out what can be done that would actually make a difference to the people involved, right? And we have to have the ability to actually make that change. That's a lot. And none of it 
is easy. It's overwhelming, and it feels like someone bigger or stronger or older or more influential should be the ones to do the job of standing up for injustice. But that's not what we're told when we read our Bible. We are told that every one of us is responsible to do something about injustice everywhere that we see it. So how can that be? How can we all be responsible for injustice? What can we do to stand up for the people around us when they need it? So to help us out here, I want to show you a few things today, starting with the book of James. Now, we've talked about this book before, so you might remember that it was written by a guy named James, and he was the half-brother of Jesus. He got to spend lots of time with him. He knew him super well, and he writes this book to what he says, the 12 tribes of Israel, at a time that they were going through some really tough stuff, that they were dealing with lots of injustice themselves. And this is what he says in chapter 2. If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So this sounds kind of harsh, right? Especially the end there. He's telling people that they have dead faith. What is James on about? What's his point? He starts by talking about something that he can see people doing. He talks about members of a community walking by people that are in serious need, saying something nice to them, but then not actually physically doing anything to help them. They just walk away. Like, it's cool to be nice to people, but there's a clear and immediate need that people can do something about. Sure, they may not be able to totally fix people's situations when they just pass someone on the street, but if someone needs food, James says, if you have food, give it to them. If someone needs clothes and you have extra clothes, you give them some. That's not complicated, is it? James is telling this community that this can be so much simpler than they make it in their minds. I imagine the people he's talking to deal with some of the same thoughts that we have. I mean, these are people that are kind to the needy. They don't ignore them. They just don't end up doing anything real to actually physically help. Maybe because they feel like, well, they can't solve the deeper issue, but that blinds them to the actual things that they can do. James is trying to get people to understand that they are surrounded by opportunities to do something. They've got what they need to show people that they care and to do something that's needed. He tells us that our faith and our actions are connected. He says that when we've put our faith in Jesus, it's supposed to move us to action. And if we don't see ourselves being moved to act about the unjust things that we see right in front of us for the benefit of the people that are in need, he says that something in our faith is dead. Something about our faith isn't right. Living a life of faith is about becoming more like Jesus. And if we want to say that we're becoming more like Jesus, we have to be doing the things that he did. And he fed the hungry. He helped the sick and the poor all the time. It was the pattern of his life. He stood up for justice when people, when people were being mistreated. Not just with his words, with his actions. Look, that all sounds real nice, but like I know myself, it's just hard to keep that up. I can't care about other people every single day, can I? I'm supposed to do something for all of these unjust things that I've seen and heard about? That's an absolutely normal feeling. And in fact, Christians have been dealing with that exact issue for a really long time. We've always wrestled with getting tired of trying to do something about these big problems that seems like no matter what you do, they don't ever fully go away. And so the book of Galatians says this, and let us not grow weary of doing good, 
For in due season, we will reap if we don't give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially those who are of the household of faith. These verses remind us that the good that we do will always make a difference. It will. We can't always see it right away, and that's discouraging, but we're reminded that in due time, it is always worth it. And this is the best part. Any effort that we try to muster up to to make ourselves more like Jesus, to make ourselves more capable of helping and make ourselves more compassionate like he was, we always fall short. In this context or in any other, we can't be Jesus. We're people, right? He was God. But If we remember that our actions are connected to our faith, then that means it's not up to our own abilities. It's not up to our own willpower to consistently see injustice and do something for the people that are facing it. Ultimately, it's up to God. He has to make the real changes. He has to keep us filled up with compassion for people, he has to use the actions that we take to make real differences in the lives of others. Our job is to surrender. Our job is to connect with God and let him keep compassion in our hearts, to put in our minds the specific actions that we can take to care for the people around us and trust that he will see justice served when we do that. When it comes to injustice, we are called to never stop doing something. Doing something about injustice can't just be a box that we check. It can't be a one-time thing. That's not what standing up for justice really is. We can't be the somebody who does something once and never does it again. If we want to be people who show others that God cares about injustice, we have to keep caring. It has to be a part of our everyday lives. God calls us to a lifelong attitude of justice and continued action as we live out our faith. We might not be able to change everything, but we can keep doing something. Maybe you're already doing something, or maybe you're not sure where to start. You know you want to care more about what's happening to the people you know, but you don't know how you can begin. Well, here are a few ways we can all keep doing something about injustice. The first is to use your voice. Say something when you see unfair, wrong things happening to the people that you know and that you see every day. Start a conversation with people that can do something about what you're seeing happen. We may not all have the power or influence that we think we need to make real changes, but we all have a voice to speak up when we see injustice happening to those around us. Next is to use your influence. All of you have some kind of influence. Maybe you don't see yourself as some super popular person that everyone listens to anytime you have an opinion about anything, but all of you have someone that listens and cares about what you have to say. They care about what you think. So share the injustices that you care about with the people that are close to you. There is power in a group of people all coming together and beginning to care deeply about something together. Next is to use your talents. You've all got things that you're good at and that you can do together with other people. How can you serve people with the things that you are able to do? And what influence do your talents give you that you could use to draw attention to injustices that happen and use that influence to make changes? Finally, is to use your time. Look for the opportunities to make serving others a part of your everyday life. This can be hard because so many days we just kind of go through the same motions and and things just feel kind of normal. It's hard to point out things that need to be changed when it's so much a part of a normal day for you. 
but you're not left alone to figure this out yourself. So ask God to show you the best ways that you can use your time and who you could focus on helping. As followers of Jesus, we are called to never stop doing something about injustice. So as you leave today, I just want you to think about this. How can you use your voice, your influence, your talent, and your time to do something about injustice? Thanks so much for joining us. This series has been great, and I hope you guys join us again next week. I love you all. See you.